Leading lines are a way that you can use any linear forms within your photograph to either point at the subject or lead your viewer's eye through the frame. Leading lines can be anything from a river, layers in a rock, train tracks right through to a road or a branch or even a tree trunk. You can also combine waves and long exposures with anything moving, as well as movement itself. When you find a really good set of leading lines and you use them properly, this can introduce flow and it'll make your photograph look really dynamic. And like with framing, leading lines can give a lot of depth to your photograph. With this road, I could imagine walking down it and this helps make the shot more compelling. Patterns could also be considered leading lines because they draw your eye through the frame. A bit like this shot where the lines in the crops make it very easy for your eyes to move vertically. Try looking at this shot from left to right. Feels a bit weird, doesn't it? And this is in essence what leading lines are. They're a way for you as a photographer to help lead your viewer's eye through the frame to exactly what you want them to look at. And like I've already said, no matter what the photography assignment, I'll always look for these. The most common form of leading lines are converging lines, but they aren't the only ones to look for. Converging lines are basically where you've got a set of lines coming together. For example, looking along a road or a path as it leads into the shot, the sides of that path will get closer and closer together. If those lines kept on going in your shot, they would end up meeting, hence the name converging lines. When shooting architecture or real estate, if there's a big space and the client wants to show this off, you can use this technique to emphasize that, and converging lines with a super wide angle lens work really well, and they can make quite a small space look really big. You can also use vertical lines to lead your viewer's eye through the frame, like that field of crops I showed you earlier. Now you might think trees do the same when there's a shot when there's lots of verticals of all of the tree trunks. However, this doesn't scream dynamism to me. As trees are very static, I think they give a feeling of grandeur and stability. Another way to use vertical lines is to use a longer focal length when the roads are wet and it's getting dark. The wet roads will reflect headlamps and the longer focal lengths will keep these lines straight. This was shot on an 85mm Prime on a very rainy street in Bangkok. Now when I'm out and about, I like to use a longer focal length and try and get a line going straight through the frame top to bottom. And I do this with paths, rivers or trees, and this is in effect making that leading line the subject itself. Curvy lines are great ones to look for, and you'll often find these in rivers and roads, and they'll form an S or a Z shape. Now, if you put these in your foreground, they'll really help lead the viewer's eye into that frame. This can really add to your photograph, and I'll often stop on a bridge or I'll park next to it and run back to the bridge because a bridge tends to be a great viewpoint looking up a meandering river and often looking up a valley as well. Rivers are a great one to give curvy lines, but you do sometimes have to lengthen the exposure to emphasize the lines in the water. If you do freeze the motion, the lines sometimes can get hidden. Diagonal lines can give a sense of movement, but often they can break the shot as well. With this image, my eyes are conflicted. They want to move down the near vertical lines, but they also want to follow the lines that go off and back to the right. Now, a leading line normally leads you to something interesting in your frame, but that doesn't always have to be the case. Sometimes, if the leading line is the interesting thing in that frame, it becomes the subject itself. However, if it's not that interesting and it doesn't lead to anything, this makes for a very average photograph. When I took this shot, I thought it might make a good photograph, but the lines in the foreground just don't lead anywhere. If there was a person walking along the path, this would have helped, or even better, if there was a sailing yacht out to sea just off the tip of the path, this would have made this shot much clearer. Check out this group of images. Sometimes, even though you might think you found a great shot with the leading lines, they just don't quite work. And normally it's when the leading lines aren't leading you to anywhere significant. However, when there is a payoff at the end of that leading line, this makes it a much better photograph. In this shot, the headland into the lake is where my eye goes first, but then the road takes over and leads my eye up to the mountains and the clouds. With wide angle lenses and the distortion that you normally get, it's easy to emphasize those leading lines. However, it's also easy to lose the size of the subject in your frame. So if you are using a wide angle lens, make sure you're not too far away from the subject. So take a test shot and check it on the back of your camera. If the thing that you want to be the main subject is tiny in your frame, you may have to change your position. 
Or alternatively, if you've got a zoom lens, you could zoom in. And this is what makes zoom lenses so versatile. You can get closer to your subject really quickly and you can make that subject bigger and more dominant in your frame. When you're out, look for paths, layers in rocks, or even lines in fields of crops. When you do find some lines, look at that scene from different positions through your camera. Sometimes you'll have to get lower, sometimes you'll have to get higher, sometimes you'll have to shoot wider, and sometimes you'll have to shoot longer. If the leading line goes out of the frame, this will lead your viewer off the photo and onto the next one. So try to keep those lines pointing in the frame and at your main subject. At this point, take multiple shots from different positions and then look back at them to see which ones work better than others. And come to think of it, this is a great habit to learn in photography in general. You want to make sure you've got the shot before you leave that location. So check to see what you've got. The worst thing is when you get home, you look at your photographs on your computer and realize then where you should have been standing compared to where you were standing. Now, I have to admit, I still forget to do this and I've been taking photographs for 25 years. I've already mentioned that wide angle lenses work really well and can exaggerate those leading lines. However, you can shoot on longer focal lengths as well. I shot this on an 85 mm prime and the lines are still there, pointing to the people walking along this rainy street. Now, if you're photographing your partner, you might think to just fill the frame with them or use a longer lens and get a close-up of their head and shoulders, but you can use leading lines in this instance as well. When we were hiking in South Wales, I got a few shots like this, but then I shot wider to show the extent of these mountains in the Brecon Beacons. You might even be able to incorporate more than one leading line in your shot. Now, rivers, paths, and roads do have two sides, so inevitably you're gonna have two lines going through, but sometimes you can find more than that. You can have them pointing in different directions, but sometimes this can be confusing. So I like to have them all pointing at the similar thing. Some shots that I've taken that I thought were okay at the time, when I look back at them later on, looked a bit confusing. And if you think the shot is confusing, it's more than likely that the viewer will think the same. Now there is a habit in landscape photography to keep everything perfectly in focus, whether you just shoot with a smaller aperture or you focus stack. But I sometimes like to do the opposite. First of all, I can get it in one shot without the need for a tripod. But also, if the foreground is slightly out of focus, this is kind of how we see it with our own eyes. And this is encouraging the viewer to follow along that leading line to the point that is more in focus. To me, having that blurry foreground just seems that little bit more natural. Next week, I'm gonna take a closer look at a completely different compositional technique, and that's the use of negative space. And once you understand it, you can really use it to your advantage. If it's out already, I'll link it here. And I'll see you next time.